Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staber, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. Today is Election Day, a turning point in America's future. You need to get out and vote and vote your values. We're going to be talking about the importance of today in America and our life, liberty, and family all being put on the line today. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council and dean of Liberty University School of Law. Joining me is Matt Barber, director of cultural affairs for Liberty Council and associate dean for the law school. This is, Matt, a very important day in American history. Now, on this program, we're not going to tell you who to vote for, but we will encourage you to vote your values. And we have a lot of resources at Liberty Council's website and also the Freedom Federation website of voter guides that are already reviewed. You can go to lc.org. And on the front page, there is a section there. You click on it, and it has all these voter guides for all kinds of state, national, and local elections all over the country. Those can be downloaded, printed out, distributed, uh, but those are 501c3 compliant voter guides. Yeah, Matt, I was doing a radio interview the other day, and the host asked me, he said, Matt, how, how important is this election uh, coming up here? And and I, I said, and, and I don't think this is hyperbole here, I said I think that this is the most important election we have ever had in the United States of America to date. This is the most important one. We are at a crossroads here, and we have a decision to make as a country. We are either going to return to the principles uh, embraced by our founding fathers of life, of liberty, individual liberty, of freedom, uh, or we are going to head down this path that fringe leftists in Congress are taking us to a neo-Marxist, secular, humanist kind of America that's really just created in the image of these European nations that are, are struggling so. We see riots in France. We see Greece. Their entire economy is about to collapse or about to go bankrupt. So are we going to emulate them, or are we going to return to American exceptionalism? And I think that we really are at a crossroads today. We are at a crossroads in America, and today every single person registered to vote has an opportunity to make a difference. And I would encourage everybody to go to the polls, encourage others to go to the polls. Now, obviously, you can't go to the polls if you're not registered, unless you're in certain parts of the country. Yeah, right? there. But no, right. go to the polls uh, if you're registered, and make sure that you encourage other people to go to the polls as well. When you go to your work today, and if you're at work and you're listening to this message, make sure that... The people around you that don't have the I voted sticker on or that haven't voted, go to the polls before they close tonight because this is a historic election. Every election is important, but I believe this election is historic because it really sets the agenda for the next couple of years in America and then really lays a, a platform beyond that for the future of America. Yeah, you, you make a great point. People should should grab their friends, their family members who share their values and encourage them to get out and vote, you know. And, and Matt, we, we've been hearing uh, up to today this notion of an enthusiasm gap, that uh, those who support really uh, conservative, uh, Reagan conservative principles uh, seem to be really motivated here, as we've seen, you know, with the, the Tea Party, the, the innovation of the Tea Party, and these kind of this grassroots uprising that we've seen here in the nation, which is a, really a rebellion against this, this fringe leftist uh, a, a trajectory that we're heading down. Yet those who, you know, who, who in droves, many of them who, for instance, voted for, for President Obama, seem to be very discouraged because he's either not doing things fast enough for them or um, or is uh, really they also see that he was uh, this was false advertising here. He was not what he claimed he was. So what do you think about this enthusiasm gap? Well, I think that there's a lot of enthusiasm for many people going to the polls. And I think we're probably going to see some uh, increased turnout all over yeah. the country. I, I think what we're going to see are people who are very interested in making a difference. Now, there may be some people who are just not enthusiastic and they don't show up. Uh, hopefully those that really are values voters that want to vote their values and that really care about life, liberty, and family will show up all over the country. 
Now, obviously, uh, there are candidates all over the map on these various issues. You're you're voting for local officials. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes it's hard to know where they stand. You're voting for judges. You're voting for state officials. You're voting for national officials as well. So the entire direction of America literally is in our hands. And I think, as uh, one person told me one time, voting is a prophetic witness to the community. It is a talent that God has loaned us. And God expects us to use it wisely. For example, if uh, you don't believe that it's right to take the life of an unborn child, which I would hope that you wouldn't believe that, uh, that life is precious and you shouldn't kill an innocent unborn child any more than you should kill an innocent six-month-old child, then you've got the opportunity to be able to do something. Uh, with regards to law and policy that gives life protection to that child. And if you don't, or if you vote for somebody who believes exactly the opposite, you're putting forth an agent who's actually speaking on your behalf, an ambassador for you, Mm -hmm. to do exactly opposite of what your core values are. And I think we're going to be held accountable for that. And so that's why it's important that we go to the polls and we vote these values. Voting is an extension of our core values. Yeah, voting is taking leadership. We have a unique form of government here in the United States of America where we, the people, are the sovereign. We are in charge. Uh, We hire people to go and represent us, but we are the ones that are in charge. And, And the way that we weigh in on who is going to be hired to represent us is through our vote. That is how we, as as we the people, as the sovereign leaders of this country, exercise our authority and when uh, those who we have uh, elected or those who we have hired to go and represent us uh, do not do what they promised to do when they were hired, then just like any corporation or any small business, we do what's next as we reevaluate the situation and decide whether or not we're going to renew their contract. And I think there are a lot of elected officials right now in office who have um, uh, missed the mark on what they were had promised to do and what we hired them to do, and there are many of them who may be getting a pink slip. Well, they may well be getting a pink slip, and that's good. And I think that those new people that come in uh, need to be held accountable as well. One of the problems that we've had in the political process is oftentimes people court us uh, Christians, mm-hmm. values voters, and because uh, as Christians, that's a huge voting block. And they need uh, people of faith, of conservative, uh, pro life, uh, marriage related values to help them become mm-hmm. elected officials. But when they get into office and they ignore who you are and they ultimately uh, decide to go soft on those issues, I think that what we need to do is be very strong in voting our values to put people in office and be very strong in voting our values to take people out of office and to hold them accountable while they are in office. And those in office ignore those who embrace life and family and religious liberty at their own peril. You know, Dick Morris wrote an article the other day in The Hill titled The New Religious Right. And he flirted with the idea that uh, the Tea Party movement, which is really just a grassroots uprising of Reagan conservatives, that they uh, that they quote uh, have no interest in in social issues. And I, he's completely mistaken. Just because we necessarily well, are focusing on fiscal issues does not mean that the Tea Party is not interested in he's, social he's issues. He's very mistaken. I know he's spoken at Tea Party events before, but probably he hasn't stayed around for people who are conservative, uh, pro-social issues sure. to speak. But every one of those that I know of, that either uh, people that I know have attended or others have attended or I have, a, have been a part of, uh, whenever someone gets up and speaks about life or marriage, mm-hmm. guess what gets the greatest applause? Oh, it's absolutely. that issue. It's, yeah. Certainly the economic issue is front and center on people's minds, and that's understandable because of the way that the country is with regards to unemployment, the economics, uh, health care bill, all those things that were coming down, cap and trade, all those kinds of pieces of legislation that were being debated that affect us uh, in our economy. That's on the top of people's mind. But don't be fooled to think uh, that those people who you see gathered out in the streets 
in the public parks are pushing away social conservative values like life and marriage. That, that would be a dire mistake. I think the conservative resurgence that we see here, that I think we will see after today, uh, it will be a flash in the pan unless those individuals who are reelected to office uh, do vote and move forward and follow the agenda of Reagan conservatism. Strong national defense, strong, relig- uh, strong f- uh, freedom, strong social issues, and strong economic issues. Well, give us a call at Liberty Council at 1-800-671-1776. You can ask for the book, Take Back America. It's a book that I wrote, and it is time for us to take back the founding principles, the first principles that made America great, that there is a God who is a creator, and that God gives us life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the Declaration of Independence. And government are instituted to protect those pre-existing liberties. That's the purpose and direction of government, and that's the duty of every elected official. Call us today at 1-800-671-1776 and ask for the book, Take Back America, or visit lc.org. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom. 